All right, hello everybody. This is Moreland Engineering, and today we're gonna to be giving you guys a quick rundown of our photogrammetry 3D scanning process. So to start out, I've laid out everything you need here today to get started scanning. So first thing you're gonna need is the object that you're gonna be scanning. In this case, we're gonna be scanning a NB Miata deck lid. You're also going to go ahead and need to get your chalk. Um, this stuff is spray chalk that is perfectly safe for paint, comes off very easily with water, and you can usually get them for about $15 for a pack of three from Amazon. Additionally, you're going to need some sort of device in order to spray your chalk out in sort of a splatter or dot pattern. Um, we have designed these 3D printed nozzles that work very well to get you the pattern that you want. Um, however, you can also use a coffee straw or even uh, tape if you're in a little bit of a pinch. Um, to get the pattern that is required. Um, and the idea behind the pattern is that having a bunch of medium-sized dots uh, will help the software better align the photos that you'll be taking. Moving to the camera, you're going to want a DSLR camera and you're going to want a lens that, is, that has a fixed focal length. Um, you want approximately a focal length of around 35 millimeters to 55 millimeters. I find that for crop sensor cameras, a 35 millimeter lens works pretty well. And for full frame cameras, you can bump that up to about a 55 millimeter. And the idea behind that is, is you want to minimize as much lens distortion as you possibly can. Additionally, um, this isn't required, but what really helps is also having a tripod. Um, if you're not shooting in ideal lighting conditions, or simply if you have the extra patience to lug this around as you circle around your part. It definitely helps a lot in increasing the quality of the photos you're going to be taking, which is going to ultimately result in a better scan. So when it comes to photos, you're going to want to take um, approximately, I would say about 30 to 70 photos for an object of this size. However, if you're going to be scanning a full car, you're going to be wanting much more photos. Um, typically we find that on the order of 200 to 300 gets a very workable 3D scan. You also want to bear in mind that the number of photos you are limited to is directly correlated to the amount of RAM your processing machine has. So um, keeping that in mind, there are software out there like Autodesk Recap that utilizes cloud-based computing in order to take away some of the load from your um, local machine and instead utilize cloud computing so that you don't have to worry about your machine limiting the quality of scan that you can take. So, uh, just a sec here, we're going to get started um, spraying down our part and get to scanning. Okay, so now that you've got your part sprayed down, you're gonna wanna give it at least about 10 minutes or so for the chalk to dry, and that'll help reduce some of the reflectivity of the dots and help improve the quality of your scan. So now, while we're waiting for this to dry, we can kind of walk around the part here and give you guys an idea of what you're looking for when it comes to the size of dots and the spread. So if you can see, you got these dots sprayed all over the deck lid over here. Um, these are a little bit on the smaller side. Um, Sometimes it really depends on the size of the object that you're scanning, what size dots you want. But I typically find dots that are on the order of this size right here are pretty good and kind of what you're looking for. Um, there's no real rhyme or reason to the pattern here. You kind of just want to think about, you know, you think that you're spray painting a car here, but as poorly as you possibly can. Um, the use of different colors also helps kind of give the, the scan a little bit more data and, you know, I have. Occasionally you also run into paint colors that you know certain colors don't work well with so you're gonna want to have a couple different colors on hand just to mitigate that as well. So when you're scanning a full car you're going to want to use a different color for each side of the car. Typically we found that if you use just one color for the entirety of the car what ends up happening is the two sides of the car flip and the scan processes them and puts them together on the wrong side and so your scan turns out all wonky. 
So next we're gonna talk about how you're gonna go about taking the pictures for your scan. So lighting conditions are critical to making sure that you get a good quality scan. The ideal lighting conditions are going to be something like out, being outside on an overcast day, somewhere around noon where you have perfectly diffused lighting, you don't have major reflections all over your car that are gonna throw the scan off, and ultimately, you just basically want as matte of a finish on whatever it is you're scanning as possible. You can kind of see some reflections right here that might give us some noise in this area. Typically, I find that if you have cars with more reflective paint or perhaps you're trying to scan an area like a windshield that's gonna be more reflective to begin with, you can utilize the white chalk, which usually comes in the packets, without a nozzle or a coffee stirrer or anything, and then use that to kind of just go pretty hard over any reflective surface, and that'll give you a nice matte diffuse layer for the scan to pick up. So next, we're gonna talk a little bit about the ideal camera settings in order to take your shots. So, you want to make sure, first of all, that your ISO is as low as possible. Typically, this is going to vary based on the quality of camera that you have, but um, sometimes when you're shooting indoors, for example, you might not be able to get, get away with a low ISO value, but we typically find that something around 800 to 1600 is usually about the max you wanna go, otherwise, your pictures start to get a little bit too noisy, a little bit too grainy, and the scans can't decipher that noise as well from the dots on the car. So um, in this case, I'm gonna be shooting inside, so I'm probably going to want a little bit more ISO than I normally would if I was going to shoot outside. The next thing you're gonna want is to properly set your aperture settings. So you're gonna want, um, you're gonna want the smallest possible aperture that you can get away with for your lighting conditions. Typically, um, you're gonna wanna shoot at something around um, a bit of like 10 or 11. This is a good place to be. However, when you're inside, um, this gets a lot more difficult to get away with. As you can see, my shutter speed right now is one fifth of a second, which is way too fast for me to be able to walk around and take pictures by hand. In this case, I'll have to employ a tripod, which is no problem, but is gonna slow us down a little bit. All right. So now we're gonna start taking your pictures and a good strategy for taking your pictures, um, it's really gonna depend a little bit on the object that you're scanning, um, but typically um, the, the whole idea tends to be a little bit more or less the same. So you wanna make sure that you get good coverage all the way around whatever it is you're scanning and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get good coverage in different angles at different heights and you wanna make sure that you're moving around the part and not just standing in one spot and then taking a picture here and then turning the camera a little bit and then taking another picture and then turning the camera a little bit again and taking another picture that way. You're gonna get, you're gonna start to get weird perspectives on the part that's gonna not be, is gonna be outside the bounds of what the scan, scanning software can handle and is gonna start to skew some of your parts. What I would do when scanning this guy is I would start right here in the center and just work my way around the part. Ideally, you wanna make sure there's no obstacles in your way so you can get a decent bit of distance um, away from the part. And then you're just gonna keep going all the way around and do a full circle of the part. And then once you've got one lap done, then you can move your camera up a little bit and then again, do another full lap at that level. And then finally, I would do some over the top passes of the deck lid and start moving up over the deck lid and back and forth. So all I'm doing over here right now is taking a couple measurements on a couple of sharp-ish points that I can find on the part. And the reason I do that is once the scan is processed by the software, it doesn't come back in a scaled format. So the actual size of the part is gonna be very different from the actual STL file that you get. So you need to take a couple of reference measurements off whatever it is that you're scanning so that later on, once you have your scan in your CAD software of choice, you can then use that reference measurement to properly scale up and then orient your part. Now that we got our measurements and our photos, we can go ahead and move over to the software side. 
So for this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how you can process a scan using Autodesk Recap Photo. So once you have the software open, you're gonna to wanna to come up all the way over here to Object and click, and then click anywhere, and then go uh, navigate to the folder that your photos are at. Go ahead and select all of your photos, and then hit Open. And then now that all your photos are in here, you're gonna go ahead and hit create. Give your project a name, hit start, and that's it. Once your scan is processed, it should take about a day or so depending on the length of the current queue. You're gonna go ahead down here to your cloud drive and then hit download. And then once it's downloaded, you'll see it pop up over here to your computer um, it'll ask you to save your project to a certain folder. Just go ahead and pick wherever you want to save it. And then you can go ahead and open your project up and it'll load your model. And there you go. Now you have your part in here. So it's got a neat little built-in 3D viewer here. You have a couple different options. You can view it with the photos visualized on there. Um, however, I find if you hit solid, It'll give you a better representation of the quality of the scan. Um, as you can see, there's some graininess here to the part that isn't otherwise visible when you have the photos turned on. Um, and this graininess isn't a big deal. It's a part and parcel of any sort of 3D scanning technology. You'll notice it a little bit more with the photogrammetry method. Um, however, I find that it doesn't really detract from workflow really at all compared to more expensive methods of 3D scanning. So. From here, you can go ahead and make any sort of edits you want in this software. Um, if there's any sort of blobs or anything sticking out past the uh, deck lid, uh, maybe something like this, you can go ahead and use some of the tools here to cut it. And then once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and hit export, export model, and I'd recommend saving it as an STL, um, hit export, and go ahead and save this wherever you want. Now we're going to move on over into uh, Autodesk Fusion 360, um, again using this software to demonstrate as it's the most accessible, I believe, for everybody to use. And so you're going to start out with your um, new design, and then from here you can go ahead, hit Insert Mesh, then navigate to wherever you saved your file. And once it's loaded in, go ahead and hit OK. And now you'll see that you have our part in here. However, it's not really aligned with any sort of axes and it is not gonna be to scale. So um, we're gonna recall that we took some measurements of this part earlier. Um, in particular, I took a measurement of these corners over here. And basically what you're gonna wanna do is use your inspection tool and then try and get as much accurately as you can on the corner of the STL over here and get a good measurement and it's not going to be perfectly accurate but for the most part it's going to be pretty damn close for whatever your purposes are going to be and so I've measured over here in the part it is 26.672 inches and in real life um, I measured that part uh, that part of the deck lid is 32 and 7 eighths of an inch so I'm going to go ahead and put that in the calculator here and so I have my measurement of the part itself. And now I'm gonna divide it by what I measured in Fusion. And this number right here is gonna go ahead and give me a scaling factor. So I can take this number, go over here into my mesh editing tools in Fusion, hit edit, go to modify, scale, Select your part. Um, I typically like to scale around the origin, um, although before you aligned it, it doesn't really matter. Um, and now go ahead and enter your scaling factor and hit enter. And now you have a part that is scaled. So from here, what you're gonna go ahead and want to do is now you can just go ahead and use the move tools to properly orient your part to your origin and your axes. Um, that's gonna be a little bit of a personal preference thing. But the easiest way to do that is essentially just use the tool to start rotating the part 
um, to get, let's say, the x-axis parallel to where the frame would be, and then the y-axis parallel to where the axle of the car is going to be. And you can just basically sit there, trial and error, and then bump it in whichever direction you need and utilize the inspect tool and measure to each of these planes over here to figure out um, which, which direction you're going to need to bump it into and how you're going to need to pitch it um, in order to get it aligned properly. Um, so it's kind of a tedious and slow, uh, crashy process, so I'm not going to demonstrate that here, but I'm sure that's something you guys can figure out on your own. Um, so that's where we'll end the video here today. Um, appreciate everybody for watching, and hopefully you guys can make some good scans and make some cool parts out of it. Thank you.